Welcome to the Comics Experience Graphic Novel of the Month Club for the month of April. This is April. Our book this month is The Breakaways by the fantastic Kathy G. Johnson. Yay! <laughs> Yay! There you go. Yay! Right. Thank you. Uh, who's sitting right here behind, beside me? Um, hi, Kathy. Hi, Brian. Welcome, and hi. thanks for coming out. Kathy came all the way from Rhode Island, so that's Rhode that's Island. that's a long way to come for to come and talk to you guys and talk to everybody out yeah. there. Um, let me also uh, before before we totally get started because I always forget to do this. I want to thank my sponsors at the Beat. Um, uh, the, the, well, I think the best comics related news site. It's the only one that doesn't annoy me with its pop up I'm ads. I'm a fan. And stuff, I'm a fan. <laughs> um, and uh, and they're our sponsors, and they and they help make the show uh, happen. And also, if any of you are watching on the internet right now, um, you probably aren't. But if you are, uh, feel free to ask questions in the chat, and they will get the questions to me, and we will ask them for you as we go along. That's the cool. business side of the way. So cool. the breakaway is Kathy. Um, my first question always is, and I love this question, is why comics? Of all the ways that you could express yourself, what is it about comics that that speaks to you, spoke to you, drew you in? Yeah. Um, so I've been a comics reader since I was, I don't know, since I could start looking at pictures, which was basically immediately upon birth. Um, I loved comics in the newspaper. I loved comics. I loved Archie. Archie was my first comic. I loved Archie. Um, and then I started reading Sailor Moon and manga and all that. And it seems like comics are like a really natural way to want to tell stories. There's pictures and there's words. And it just it feels very natural for us to be thinking about things visually as well as verbally. I fe it feels like it just makes sense to be able to look and read at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so Archie was your first love. Archie was my first love. Yeah. Uh, you <laughs> picked it up off the newsstands, I assume. Yes, uh, yeah. in in Little Dukes, which was a convenience store that my family would go to on our way to camping every summer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. so shout out Little Dukes. <laughs> right on. Right on. Uh, so a spinner rack, right, of, of comics? That was they were sort of low, right, next to, like, the Snickers bar. Okay. It's, like, low, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So I could grab it. Yeah, right. Right, kids right, kids level. Like, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anything to keep you quiet in the, in the car ride, right? <laughs> well, I would get sick every car oh. ride. I don't know if you guys get sick. I get si I got sick every single car ride. It was horrible. Oh, okay. But once you get camping, I don't know if you guys have gone camping before, um, but usually you just sit outside for days and right. you don't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. so reading comics was like the way I would yeah. pass the time. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know, very much uh, a lot of camping for me is sort of sitting and staring at the middle distance. You know, yeah. just yeah. being it's in good nature. To turn your brain off. Exactly. Hanging out in exactly. nature. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Read some books. Yeah. Um, what else did you read when you were a kid? Um, so it was all. Um, newspaper strips like Garfield and maybe Cal Far Side, but Far Side can kind of get adult. Calvin, um, Calvin a little bit. Okay. It was almost strictly Garfield. Yeah, Calvin and Hobbes. You're right. Um, but it was almost strictly Garfield. Right. Um, because they had little collections in the library that I would go and check out. Um, and then I read Archie. I read all the Archie digests, little digests like. Not all of them, because I know sure. there's decades sure. worth of Archie. Sure. Um, and then uh, basically around when I was seven or eight years old, that's when Sailor Moon started to get published. Mm. And I, I, like, I was looking into the history of it, and I own like the first Sailor Moon that was published. Okay. Like in like the thin floppy yeah, type yeah, yeah, yeah. that um, Tokyo Pop, which was not called Tokyo Pop at the time, it was like yeah. mix. Mix comics. Mix, mix. <laughs> comics mix. Yeah. And then. Um, I have like the very first few issues of that. So I must have just been waiting for comics because um, at the time there weren't a lot of comics for kids. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. It was all like Spawn and yeah. it was like all yeah. really scary. Yeah. Well, and even more so at the time, uh, comics were, it was a point of honor that comics weren't for kids. Yeah. Right? Because, because, and this is history. You guys are probably totally bored by this kind of history. Well, I'm, I'm 29, so right. I'm, I'm almost the age of this store. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's, that's really true. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's scary. <sighs> I know, I feel old. Congratulations, um, Brian. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, comics were, uh, 
comics, comics actually went in front of the Congress. The, 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 there was a hearing that said that comics were un-American and were turning children into perverts and weirdos because they had violence in them and things like that. And juvenile delinquency was ascribed to comics. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so for like 20 years in this country, nobody read comics. Nobody thought it was, they thought it was just a, a, a poor children's medium. And so during the period that you're talking about, the comic book publishers were all like, no, comics are for adults. They're, yeah. they're adulty. They're real super adulty like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then so basically every time I try to go to a comic book store to get uh, Pokemon cards, I don't know if you guys know what Pokemon is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I like, so I would go to the comic book store to buy Pokemon cards because it was a game in the comic okay. shop. And all the comics looked really scary. Like, I mm. feel like I couldn't go in there. They were really adult. They right. probably weren't for me. Right. So when they started to publish manga, Japanese comics, they put them into bookstores, like normal bookstores, yeah. yeah. which I felt safe going sure. to as sure. a young child. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. And then eventually comic stores started to catch on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Took a while. It, it certainly took a while. And now they're bright and shiny like this. <laughs> Yay! Um, very good. When, what's the first comic you remember drawing? Because I imagine oh, as yeah. a kid you totally. were... Totally. Uh, do you guys know Powerpuff Girls? The cartoon? Yeah. So I did Powerpuff Girls based comics. Okay. Um, I did a little zine. I cut it up and I folded it. So zines are self-made, handmade little books. And so I folded it up, and it was sort of like P Powerpuff Girl style. It was a duck and a raccoon, and the duck was drowning, and the raccoon saved it, which is sort of the opposite of how you would think. You would think the duck would be fine in the water. Right. Um, <laughs> I think raccoons are pretty good swimmers too, uh -huh. actually. So, but then so the duck is drowning, and then the raccoon goes and saves him. And I made a little book, and I gave it all to my friends and uh -huh. stuff and family. And how old were you? Do you uh, think? Or what grade was this? Five, wow. six years old. Maybe. Wow, yeah. that young. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. When I was like three, my art was just cutting up paper into tiny, tinier paper. <laughs> I love to cut paper up like a lot. Mm -hmm. So I, I, en I ended up doing a lot of handmade books. That was like my big thing, okay. actually. Was I loved making books. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, did you go to school to study art, making comics? Or did you have another goal in mind? Yeah, so when I was in high school, I went into, for the, my last two years of high school, my junior and senior year, I went to an art high school. And I made zines, I self-published comics, I would sell them to comic book stores yes. to then sell for me. Um, and then when I went to college, I went to the Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore, Maryland. I did. <laughs> um, <laughs> I my major was interdisciplinary sculpture. Oh, yeah, that's what the so sculpture as wait, I don't wait, know. Wait, maybe you we should maybe Emma. we should have She's you. not my. T <laughs> I think we have to have you do the, the interview, Emma. Uh. Oh, no, I, but um, so uh, I chose to do sculpture because that's where all the cool kids were. No, because um, <laughs> uh, sculpture was like where it was like almost it was really conceptual. So it was all about ideas and coming up with cool things to make that were all about ideas rather than just drawing pictures. And also I was sort of like, I can draw pictures. I've been drawing my entire life. I don't need someone to teach me how to draw. So I didn't want to do illustration or comics or anything. Mm -hmm. I decided to do um, sculpture so I could like work with wood and do work with clay and work with metal and do all this fun stuff mm -hmm, that I didn't mm -hmm. know how to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Except that's what school's for, doing stuff you don't know how to do, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what, was, what did you think you were gonna do after school? Or had you um, not really thought I think that I out? Always, I was always doing comics, mm -hmm. uh, not in class. Right. And then my senior thesis was um, my first graphic novel, Jeremiah, mm -hmm. which was 160 pages because my sculpture teachers told me that I could make a comic book if I wanted to if it was really thick. Mm. So it was sculptural. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so, I made, so I made like a big book because <laughs> it was three dimensional. <laughs> Okay, okay. You let me do it. So. That's, that's, it's interesting logic, but okay. All right, all right. Yeah. All right. That's cool. Jeremiah is a fantastic, now Jeremiah is not a comic for kids. Thank you. Um, so I can't really recommend it to the, to the room. 
Um, but if you're watching at home and you're and you're not a kid, definitely. Uh, is it still in print? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. One percent press. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It came out. I guess four years ago now. Yeah, yeah. But, mm -hmm. yeah I remember uh, we actually, it was one of, because that was like the second or third month we had started the book club, and we were actually considering it. Um, cool. It was on the short list uh, uh, to be a selection back when we were starting this whole thing. Uh, and it's just, it's a really, really beautiful kind of sensitive book. So that was a, 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 a senior Thank thesis. You. That's yeah. yep. that's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. That's pretty impressive. Had you, had you been working on that? prior to it getting accepted as a senior thesis, or did you convince I them to let you do a comic and then came up with it at that point? Yeah, I think I started writing it around 2009, so that would have been my sophomore year of college, so I would have been 19, 19 years old, mm -hmm. 20. Um, so, um, and then so I was writing it and just sketching it. And almost all my books, graphic novels, because they're so long and they have so much story and characters and stuff in them, um, I end up work, I end up like thinking about it and taking notes and writing about it for years before I actually start drawing mm -hmm. it or like really work, like hardcore working on mm -hmm. it. Um, so I think I was conceptualizing it years earlier but then around senior year i was like i'm ready to draw this mm -hmm. and then my sculptor teachers were like sure so. so did you did you when you were conceptualizing it did you picture it as a 160 book at that 160 page book at that point yeah you did okay yeah so you were yeah. you were ready in your head to graduate from mini comics to yes i think i always felt so i did mini comics so like comics that were like 16 pages long just little guys that you could sell you could print and make yourself, like on a Xerox printer or something. Um, and then, but I think I always felt that to be stunting. Mm -hmm. But you need a lot of time to commit to drawing a whole graphic novel, to writing a whole graphic novel. It takes a really long time. And so when you're doing, like, when I'm going to class and stuff, I just didn't have the time mm -hmm. to be able to focus and do a long mm -hmm. book mm -hmm. until my senior thesis where your class load is sort of um, lessened and then um, so you can put the time into the work so you can put yeah. the time in yeah. yeah but I think I was ready to always I always wanted to tell long stories I always wanted to tell stories like really get to know the characters in a story mm -hmm. didn't so it didn't make you nervous to go from that shorter form to 10 times longer of a form okay nope okay okay I've always wanted to do it okay yeah, yeah. Good. Okay, that's great. Um, and then you have this this thing that you did for your senior thesis. How did it then get published? Um, so I put it. Okay. So I graduated uh, college in 2011, and then um, in 2012 I moved back home to my parents' house, and then I. Um, pitched it to publishers. I pitched it to First Second, who is the publisher of The Breakaways mm -hmm. that you're all holding in your hands. Mm -hmm. um, so I pitched it to First Second, and First Second turned it down. Um, but the editor offered to call me, Callista Brill, um, who is my editor for The Breakaways as well. She offered to call me in 2012 and tell me why they didn't want to print my book. Mm -hmm. And so that is it's interesting it's like it's like getting a bad grade or something and then you have to go and talk to your teacher and your teacher's like well i'll tell you why you got the bad grade and it makes you feel bad but you're like i want to know so next time i can do a better job right mm -hmm. so it's like exactly the same thing where i decided since this publisher didn't want to put out my book was offering to talk to me about it i said yes bring it on tell me everything that i can do differently for my next book pitch um, and then, so she told me it all. I wrote, I took down notes, and then um, years later, I sent her the Breakaways book pitch, mm -hmm. and then she bought it the next day. Oh, nice. <laughs> wow, that's great. Yeah, it that's took fantastic. her 24 hours. That's fantastic. But I think it's because we've had this relationship sure. previously. So even though they didn't want to actually print my first book, I had built a relationship mm -hmm. with this publisher. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it was still a really positive mm -hmm. experience. Um, and then so no one wanted to put it out. Another publisher who will remain nameless wanted it, but wanted me to change the ending, um, mm -hmm. which I did not want to do because um, it's my book and I wanted it to end the way I wanted it mm -hmm. to end. And so 
I decided to self-publish it. And first thing I did was actually put it all on the internet as a webcomic. A lot like the newspaper strips that I read when I was your age, mm -hmm. I put it online. So I put a three pages online a week. So it was Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Okay. Because um, it was all already drawn, mm -hmm. so it was easy enough to have like a regular updating schedule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it sort of built an audience for people who just enjoy web comics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then after it had built an audience, I printed it myself. And then I won an award. Uh, I won the Ignatz Award in mm -hmm. 2014 for um, Promising New Talent. Mm -hmm. And then in 2015, a uh, one percent press uh, bought it to print it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So it was like, <laughs> so it went from originally coming up with the idea in two thousand nine yeah. to finally being printed by a publisher in twenty fifteen. Yeah. So it took six years, and actually the breakaways also took six years. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So that seems to be my track record. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, again, doing doing a big book like this, it's. This is a lot of work. This is yeah. a lot, a lot, a lot of work. Yeah. Let me ask you about your pitch on the breakaways okay. that you said that they, they accepted in 24 hours. How, what, can you describe the pitch, the process yeah. of doing a pitch in yeah. a way that, that these guys, you know, can understand and, and, and enjoy, <laughs> obviously, but yeah. yeah. So I would say a book pitch is like, have you guys ever written a book report, right? Where you read a book and then you write about what it was about and all the characters and the plot summary and stuff like that, yeah? It's like a book pitch is a book report before you make the book. <laughs> That's cool. So it's like a summary of what the book is going to be about. It's like all the characters. Um, it's a bunch of drawings just to show um, the publisher um, what the book will look like. And then because it's unlike a word book, I need to show, th show them what the story is going to be, but I also need to show them what the art is going to look mm -hmm. like. And then, so, and then I sent it to them. Okay. So it's like pictures and it's like a summary and like talking about the characters. Okay. Yeah, I think it was like 15 pages. Okay, and how many pages of it were comics as opposed yeah, to? So yeah, so 15 pages of it were comics. Okay. And then I had like a few pages of summary, okay. a few pages of character. Right. So the breakaways um, has, I don't know, like 15 char main characters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I talked about each of those characters mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. who, th who she was and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. And yeah. they took it the next day. That's that's amazing. They took it the next day. That's got to be a great feeling too, right? <laughs> it was. Yeah. Because it was about a year of work because I had written the full draft of the script. I had been working on this book pitch and I had been working on it from 2013 to 2014. So it was like I had been working on it for a full year. Yeah, yeah. So it was a ton of work, but then it got rewarded. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's, that's the way it should be. Yeah, please. Oh, you said that. It, you said that. There are like fifteen main characters, but yep. isn't like isn't Faith the main character? Faith, you're right. You're right. Good catch. So Faith is the main character, but then a lot of the times the other characters. There's like a lot of scenes where Faith isn't in the scene, and then there's other characters. Yeah, but you're right. So there's. Also, I haven't finished the book yet. You haven't finished. I today, but, <laughs> so I might. I mean. You're right. Faith is sort of the main character. You're right. Mm -hmm. It's it's interesting. Uh, it's sort of related to what she said that this book, I, I, this is not this is not a negative at all. Has less plot than I mm -hmm. think that perhaps we're used to in a lot of the books that we read in the thing where where there's like a direct story, like mm -hmm. like somebody finds a map that leads them to a trail. Like they're like there's story yeah. stories where this is much more slice of life. Yeah. Um, was that obviously they they accepted the pitch in a day, yeah. so that wasn't a challenge for the publisher. Was it a challenge for you to how do you structure a story and keep people's interest uh, yeah. over two hundred something odd pages yeah. without having sort of that narrative to drive it? Yeah. So I think um, I think that books and stories can be anything. Um, I feel like it's almost unfair that there's there should be one main character who drives the whole story and you're always focused on that one character because in real life there's people all around you, right? There's You have tons of friends, you have tons of people that you go to school with, you have people in your neighborhood, you have people in your family, there's lots and lots of people in, in our lives. And so I wanted to tell a story about all the people that you might know, 
So it's like it focuses on faith, but she joins a soccer team. And then that soccer team, there's 11 other girls on that soccer team. And then so we learn about each one of those yeah. girls and her life. Yeah. So because I just feel like I really wanted to tell a story about like the the like how many people are in the world <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and how many people like it's, it's a story about empathy and learning about others and like uh learning about how their life might be the same but then also might be different from yours yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um you guys like that approach right yeah, yeah. <laughs> good okay because i was you know i was actually when i picked this book i was a little worried it might be a little challenging for some of you guys um but but I'm not getting any looks that make it seem like it was. <laughs> That's good. Does, do you, any of you have any questions for Kathy? I can keep talking, but no? Uh -huh. No questions? And if there's anybody watching on the internet, once again, uh, feel free to ask a question there in the chat, and we will get it. Um, OK. Um, let's talk about craft, then. Um, how do you draw? What's your process? Yeah, so or actually, I, maybe we should say, how do you put a book together? Let's start yeah. with that. Yeah. Um, First, I write the whole script. Okay. Um, just like on the computer, um, and then I. And how detailed is the script? I mean, are you going yeah. long descriptions, or because it's in your head, you you're short? This script was actually really, really detailed okay. because something that the editor had told me about my first book was that. I had already drawn and written the whole thing. I already had a finished book. Mm -hmm. And so she told me about how she wanted to be able to edit it. She wanted to be able to change it and like give feedback and then be able to change that. So like, but if it's already drawn, it's really hard to like erase a comic panel and draw a new panel or something. It's like really difficult. So I decided to, for this book, to write the entire script in a way that other people would be able to understand it and read it and be able to edit it and work with it mm -hmm. with me. So I also have an agent, Jen Lenan, who helped edit it as well. Um, and then I had um, friends help edit it and the public and the um, and Callista, the editor, be able to help edit it. So like I was able to get all sorts of feedback because I wrote sort of a much more detailed script which almost feels like it's not um, the instinct of a cartoonist to want to do that, but sure. I did it in order to benefit the book in the long sure. haul. Yeah. Sure. Um, and then, um, so then I got edited, then I did thumbnails, which are like tiny, simple sketches of what the, pic what the script is going to look like, right? So just little, where the character is going to be standing in a room, who she's talking mm -hmm. to, how, what angle their faces are at, mm -hmm. things like that. And they're called thumbnails because they're really tiny. I draw them about this big, but not thumb. Mm -hmm. um, I draw everything, it's all by hand mm -hmm. um, because I don't like staring at a computer. It hurts my eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. We all stare at computers a lot and I try to minimize that as mm -hmm. much as possible. Um, so I did that with a normal pencil and then, um, then uh, all the people I just listed, they looked at the thumbnails okay. and they gave me their feedback on the thumbnails and then some changes took place. And then, um, and then I'd start doing the final pages and then first thing I did was sketch them. I sketched them on normal printer paper like you have in your house. Like eight and a half by 11? It was 11 by 17. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so just like normal cheap printer mm -hmm. paper. Um, I drew, drew it all with like yellow number two pencils. Mm -hmm. Uh, sharpen them. I have like hundreds of sh too short pencils <laughs> that I, I'm also a teacher, mm -hmm. so I bring all the pencils to my students because I, when a pencil becomes too small, I have like these really big hands. So when a pencil is too small for my hand, yeah. for young people, they can still use it because their hands right, are yeah, smaller yeah, yeah. than mine. Yeah. So, so that's actually handy. Mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> But don't bump the handy. Yes. Yep. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, see, I was just making. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, and then I traced that using like a light box, so like uh, like a um, a box with like a light underneath, so you can see through paper, right? Mm -hmm. And then I traced the pencils with ink 
on another sheet of paper. Okay. Um, and then, th so then it starts to get complicated with our visuals to show you guys. But then I actually, each page has about four different inks, mm. ink layers. Okay. Because I wanted my colorist, Kevin Chap, to be able to have some lines to color. So like, not all lines in the book that I drew are black. There's some that are in color. I don't know if you all notice. Mm -hmm. um, because I wanted to have some dimensionality. Mm -hmm. Um, like in the trees, that's a good place to spot it. In fencing, stuff like that. Because I just didn't want it all to just be black. Um, and mm -hmm. then, um, so I traced, I had, I layered all my tracing with the inks mm -hmm. to have different layers. Mm -hmm. um, and then, <laughs> and then, um, I, and then I, I also lettered it. So I wrote the words mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. um, and then the lettering was separate from the inks starting to get a little boring. The lettering was separate from the inks um, because I have, I have, you guys know what dyslexia is? Yeah. Yeah, so it's when you're reading and you mix up letters. I have something called dysgraphia, which is like dyslexia, but for when you're writing words. Hmm. So when you're writing, I mix up my word, mix up my letters while I'm writing. I know how to spell the word. I just write it wrong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I always, when I'm like in school and stuff, I always take notes with pencil because then I can erase it and fix my spelling. Mm -hmm. But when you're inking a comic, you have to use a pen, so you can't erase. So I did all my spelling, all my lettering for the comic on a totally different sheet of paper mm -hmm. because then I could misspell and cross it out mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. edit it later on the computer. Mm -hmm. um, so if you look at my letterings, there's like tons of misspelling and all these crossing out and stuff. Mm -hmm because I just know who I am and I just knew I needed to be able to edit it as much as I wanted to and not like stress out about it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah I, I'm, I'm just curious why, given that limitation, mm -hmm. uh, it's not even a limitation, that, that challenge? It's just a maybe? difference. Yeah. <laughs> that difference, given that difference, perfect. Um, uh, why did you decide to hand letter and not have a font made of your, of your handwriting? Yeah. and, and cause Many of the cartoonists uh, that, that we talk to, obviously, we've talked about this before, they do computer lettering. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I really wanted to do it by hand because I feel like an, in comics, like we talked about before, um, it's, it's not only visual, but it's verbal. So even though they're just words, I feel like those words are part of the art. They're mm -hmm. in the page. And I felt like it was really, really important to me to be able to do it by hand, so all the letters are original. Mm -hmm. I got really, I get really picky about it. So like every page is original, mm -hmm. and then if um, the editor, if later on the publisher wanted to change some phrases, mm -hmm. I did it by hand and mm -hmm. sent them the new one instead of letting them graphic design. Right, right, right. Because <laughs> I just want all the no, all of it to be original. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it's just. Just like all the drawings are different on each page, yeah. I felt like all the letters should yeah. be on different on each yeah, page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I love it. Yeah. I just, I just, you know, like I said, given the difference, it seems like it would be easier to do it the other way. It but probably yeah. is easier. Yeah. Um, but I love it. mine is the yeah. way I want it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's uh, the way we it's don't make to comics to be easy. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. How long does it did it take you? Uh, would you say to to do a page? Start to finish. Obviously, you're not doing them hmm. start to finish in that fashion, but I don't know. A couple of days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with well, you know lunch in yeah. between and yeah. stuff. Um. Uh. Yeah, I, th I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's all good. <laughs> I didn't mean to put days. you on the spot. That a couple was... days. Yeah, yeah, because like a lot of the reasons it took six years was that I got a master's degree in that time. Mm -hmm. I did a whole other book in that time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was, um, I so the actual drawing took like a year and a half mm -hmm. or so. Okay. But there's just so many factors sure. in having a book come out um, that it took six years. But me actually drawing it, yeah. it only took a year and a half yeah. or so. So I think I ha would have a page done every couple of days. Yeah, mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. that's probably about how it shook out. And I gave myself weekends because I wanted to hang out with my friends and stuff. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> how, 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 how much time doing comics do you, is it every day for you? Is it like a yeah, six to eight hours? Day. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I'd say 
10, 12 wow. hours. Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I would spend in my studio, show yeah. up in the morning, yeah. leave in the evening. Yeah. But I, so part of it is like, um, I love to pace myself. Mm -hmm. I don't want to stress out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to feel rushed. So I'm not like in the studio, like, you yeah. know, like I'm like drawing a little bit, yeah. watching some TV, yeah, yeah. you know, keeping it yeah, chill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, keep yourself loose on it. Because I do yeah. it every day. Sure. Like, I don't take a days off. Sure. So, like, if you're doing something every single yeah. day, you shouldn't. It shouldn't be stressful. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> you should enjoy your work. That's, you should that's, enjoy that's, it. Work, work should be enjoyable. That's that's the hope, at least. I know. I know ours is. Um, uh, mm. Do you guys have? Have I asked any everything? Oh, here we go. Yeah. Um, like, where did you get the characters' names from? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, so, can I actually see a book? Yeah. So we have, there you go. so we have Faith, the main character. Um, so we have Marie, who, so this is Marie. Um, Marie is named after an author that I really love named Marie Calloway. Okay. So she's an author of books that I enjoy reading. Um, then we have Hong. I knew someone named Hong, and I thought that was a cool name. Mm -hmm. um, then we have uh, Zoe. So Zoe, Zoe's original name was Mara, but the publisher says Mara and Marie were too close. Mm. Mara was a college roommate of mine, and then Zoe was another college roommate. Okay. <laughs> so Zoe's named after my college roommate, uh, Zoe Keller. She's actually a great artist. Um, uh, then we have Bulldog and Warthog, um, because, um, uh, they rhymed and I thought they were fun. And part of what I wanted for this book was to have really cool nicknames. When I was in soccer, when I was, so it's about a soccer team, right? Um, when I was in soccer in sixth grade, I, my nickname was Spike. Uh -huh. No one called me that. I wanted to be <laughs> called Spike. And so I was like, aren't nicknames really cool? Don't you wish you could just have a cool nickname? So I really wanted to have some cool nicknames right. for the kids in this book. Because right. that's something I always wanted. Yeah. And then so we have Warthog and Bulldog. Um, and also the team is called the Bloodhounds. So that's where the dog thing comes yeah. in. Um, and then we have Soda Can. And Soda Can is named after my friend's cat, who is named Soda Cat. <laughs> so even, it's, she's not actually named after a soda can, which is just an object. Mm -hmm. um, she's named after a cat named Soda Cat, who was named after a soda can, I'm guessing. Probably. Um, <laughs> so a roundabout. <laughs> she, so really, yeah, you're right. So it, she's really named after a soda can. But she's named after a cat named after a soda can. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Sammy is also named after my friend's mom's cat, right. who is named Sammy, who's like 19. Wow. <laughs> she's a very old cat. That's an old cat. I, I was like kind of worried when this book was coming out. I was like, I don't know if Sammy's going to be around mm -hmm. to see, see her debut. Mm -hmm. But Sammy's still with us. Um, and then uh, V is named after someone I knew named V. Uh, Nadia. I think Nadia is one of the only ones who I don't know. I don't know a Nadia. Okay. It's, I guess it's just a random name. Um, and then we have Yara Lise. I had a student named Yara Lise okay. before. And then uh, Matilda. I just thought Matilda was a fun name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then Marcus, who is um, Jalissa's brother. Right. Jalissa is also sort of a random name. Um, and then uh, Marcus is named after my own brother, who's named Mark. Okay. So, and Marcus was the, sort of the mean nickname to call him. <laughs> Very good. <So. laughs> and when you have when you have people who are like you know based off your, your college roommates, yeah, are is it just the name or is the visual the similar it's characteristic? Just the, name. Just the okay. yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um like like Yara Lise is a name that from a student that I had mm -hmm. once because I'm also a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, but I felt like it was really important to never base one character, fictional character, off of like one person. They are like lots and lots and lots of people, yeah. all combined yeah. into different characters. Yeah. And part of that was because I wanted my characters to be realistic, mm -hmm. but I also didn't want to tell anyone else's story, sure. right? I wanted to be able to um, have realism to it, but also it's just other people aren't my 
story objects. Sure, of course. Right? Yeah, yeah, of course. So I, everyone wants to be, I want everyone to be able to tell their own stories. Mm -hmm. So uh, they are, there are characteristics that I pulled from people that I know in real life, but uh, no one is one person at all. Very good. Did, yeah. Did you have a favorite character? No. Nope. nope. That's okay. good. <laughs> that means they were all good. Very good. Anybody else have a question? Do you have a question? When you were writing the book, did you like like one character, or do you like one character more than the others? Mm. Is there like one that you really like? Is there a character I really like? So, they're all my favorites, obviously. Sorry, I can't choose one. But who do I really like? Hmm. Um, I think I worked really hard so everyone had her moment. Um, I think Yara Lise, who's the goalie, she's the coolest one out of the whole book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if you've, all, if you've read it, mm -hmm. but she's like the coolest mm -hmm. person. I would agree. Yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree. <laughs> so I'd say it would be it was Yara yeah. Lise. Yeah. Also, did you, when you were writing the characters, did you make any of the characters with certain aspects you really liked? Like, did you on purpose try and mm. make one character that you really liked and like some of the other characters with traits that you didn't like? Or did you make all of them with some traits that you liked and some that you didn't? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right, right? So like when we know people in our life, sometimes it seems like that person is mean. But it's like she's only mean to you maybe in that one moment in school but maybe she's got different parts of herself of her personality when she's at home with her friends or when she's with her family and things like that. Because I don't think there's ever a person, I feel like we all have the capacity, we, we all can be mean sometimes, you know? And sometimes we can all be really nice. And so it was really important to me actually to have characteristics that seemed negative and also were positive. Because I think we all, Everyone is like a full human being. Mm -hmm. So that's an awesome observation. Good job. Yeah, I agree. In the back. Um, why? One, four, so the candle. Mm -hmm. Before she changed it, it was Cassie. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose Cassie? Ooh, so Cassie. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Cassie, Cassie is, so Soda Can decided to change her name and it is revealed spoilers in the book that her real name is cassie um and it's because cassie so my name is kathy oh. and um when i was in middle school there was also someone in my class named cassie and she also had blonde hair and um that we would get mixed up a lot and i hated it so much <laughs> so i decided to name a character after the Cassie, who I used to get mixed up with a lot in middle school, to like, I don't know, to like make myself feel better about that. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a healing tool. <laughs> That's funny. Do you base any character off yourself? Is any character based off myself? Like, so. Is there, one, is, is there any one single character based off yourself? I think it would be easy to say that Faith is very much based off of me. Okay. I used to go home. I didn't have a good time in school. I had a hard time making friends. And so now I have lots of friends. Don't worry about me. Mm -hmm. We're all friends here, too. See, I make friends all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I would, when it was hard for me to make friends, and I was really quiet, and I liked to read a lot. And then I would go home, and I would just sit at my desk and draw all the time. That's all I did in all my free time. And so Faith... The main character, she does that, right? She has a hard time making friends at school, and then she goes home and draws her own imaginary worlds, mm -hmm. and that was that's sort of my mm -hmm. my mo. <laughs> Were yeah. your parents supportive of of drawing, drawing and art, oh, yeah. and going into totally. art? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they love parents love it when you read. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this. They do. Kids in a book club. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> So when I, whenever, whenever you want to buy something, my parents would never buy me toys or anything like that unless it was my birthday. But if I wanted a book, they would always buy me the yeah, book. Sure. They always would get me the book. And they would always get me art supplies because they were, it's like being creative and reading is like so good for you and good for your imagination yeah. and good for your development. 
So my parents were really supportive of that. Mm -hmm. um, they were not so supportive of like all the transformer toys I wanted to buy. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah. Please. So, uh, is there like any character that like, like, is there any single character that like you be, that you think represent like, like, did you base any characters characters off your parents? Off my parents? Yes. Oh, the dad is my dad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The dad. There's a dad. It was really important to me. So Faith's dad. It was really important to me to just have like a really nice dad who was like <laughs> just like really supportive um they have he buys them uh mcdonald's in that one <laughs> panel <laughs> but i've made the m upside down <laughs> but like just like a really nice dad who just like picks up his daughter from soccer practice and mm -hmm. lets them have sleepovers mm -hmm. yeah that's totally my dad <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, so I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I did. There's only like, so there's sort of, there's that dad and then there's the coach who isn't a very nice coach. Yeah. So that's not based off of anyone I know because that wouldn't be very nice of me. Um, that's Hong's dad, yeah. Um, uh, nope, no one's based off my mom. No. Yes? Um, I haven't finished the book yet, okay. but... Maybe it gets revealed later in the book, but you, do you say what happens to, like, why she doesn't have a mom? Why she, they never mentioned her yeah. mom? Yeah, so Faith has a single-parent household. It's just her and her dad at home. I'd never talk about why Faith is, has a single-parent household, and it's because there's a lot of people who only have one parent at home, and there's lots of reasons why you might just have one parent. You could be adopted. You could have, like, a parent could just not be around anymore because they got ill. Or um, they could be divorced. There's lots of reasons. But um, so I just wanted to be like, hey, here's a girl. She has a single parent household. And that's it. It's just normal. It's just normal. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. my gosh. Is Zoe also kind of like you because she's always trying to do art? <laughs> Let's see, Zoe. Zoe has a hard time. Yeah, you're right. She has a hard time in school. She likes to hide away from other people, which is a little like me. <laughs> um, uh, and she's really sad. Um, I th I'd say there's parts of Zoe in me too. You're right. Yeah, but she may. At the end, I think is sort of she starts to find her friends. You know. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then also, what was your first inspiration for this book? My first inspiration? Okay. So, I'm a teacher, as I've told you guys a few times. Um, I have, I used to work with the Girl Scouts after school. So I had, um, I had like, you guys know Girl Scouts, it's where a bunch of girls get together and they, we all did, we did like the dance badge and we would all dance together and then, or we would do like a beading project or something. And a lot of the times it was what, what it was about was like, it was after school. Cause when you're in school, you're getting graded and there's a lot of pressure on you and you're with a whole bunch of people. Right. But it was an after school thing with just girls. So it was like less people. Um, it was more like they weren't necessarily your friends, but it was just like, people that you could relate to in a different way because you have similar experiences. And then, so it was a, the chance to, I would always talk with all the girls in my Girl Scout troops about like, how was your day? What's a good thing that happened today? What was something that was challenging? And it was like such an opportunity to just sort of relax and talk to other people. And so I wanted to sort of talk about school because we all, love to like books about school are like helpful like it's fun to read about book, books like slice of life books right but i wanted to talk about the other aspects of school mm -hmm. so i want so doing a story about a girl's soccer team that was like after school and so it was like unstructured time and how you related to other people who are like maybe not in your grade or something like that like they were older than you um was something that i wanted to write about because mm -hmm. i think that's like an interesting experience when you're a kid. Um, 
And then, so it was inspired by Girl Scouts, but also I, when I was in sixth grade, I was on a girls soccer team. So I, so that, and we lost every game. Oh. <laughs> so I wanted to write about that sort of after school time, but also my experience of losing all the time and feeling like a loser and trying to figure out, hey, how can it be a positive experience to be losing all the time? Like, yeah. how can I, I think this is something that, um, uh, when you're growing up, that's something that you experience. Like you aren't always winning. You aren't always doing a really good job. And so it's like, how can we talk about how not doing well at something can still be a good thing? It can still be okay, right? So that's sure. sort of what I wanted to write about. Yeah, no, and I, you know, and this gets back to what I was, you know, saying earlier about it not having sort of the, the typical standard plot structure because a typical yeah. book like this, oh, the ragtag band of underdogs but they win at the end and yeah. you know and yeah they're all <laughs> champions you know which would that's the very typical way that kind of a story goes yeah. and that's one of the things i like so much about this was it was much more real feeling and yeah. and solid and you know the way people and really they, are they find yeah. their own ways to yeah, win exactly right they find their own things that they're interested yep. in yeah yep you can come in this way um <laughs> Uh, good. Uh, any other questions from the group? You're, you're going. I love it. <laughs> also, do you have any ideas for what your next book is going to be? Oh, okay. I do. I'm working on my next book. I've been writing it a year tomorrow. Like a full year. I started writing it April 15th. Okay. And today is April 14th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Oh, happy birthday. Soon. Um, a month and a day. And then, um... So I've been working on this book. I've been writing it for a long time. I'm going to email it to my publisher soon, um, or um, my agent. Mm -hmm. I'm going to email it to my agent soon. Um, but it's about, it's a secret. I'm is sorry. It a it's not a sequel. This book is, I think this one's going to be standalone. Okay. This is on its own. I was yeah. going to ask, because it, it seems like, we could we could still tell stories about all of these characters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the one character, it's like a really random character where I'm like, I. Could... <laughs> so you know Warthog? Uh -huh. yeah. She's like the blonde mean girl. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> I think it would be fun to do a story, a sequel where it would be her and she becomes a vampire slayer. <laughs> I like for, that. For, for some reason, Warthog is the character because uh. she doesn't, she, um, I have a little spoilers, but she's the one who has like a really hard time in this book. Right. Like a lot of them can have a hard time, sure. but she's having a really hard sure. time. So I think there's more for her uh -huh. to sort of overcome, uh -huh. which might be a vampire. Yeah. I don't know. I like that idea. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> You're writing some fan fiction right now. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Not bad. <laughs> Not a bad idea. So the the next book that you're working on, um, uh, is it a, a kids book? Is it's, it? I want it to be teenager, okay. teen. But okay. as you guys have learned, it takes me about six years, so it'll be perfect for this <laughs> for this group <laughs> once it comes out. <laughs> but I'm thinking teens. Okay. I'm thinking teens. Yeah. All right. So and we're not going to see another book for six years. I I mean, I mean. Yeah. I, hmm. <laughs> Um, I think six years seems like the longest time when you're growing up. Yeah. But I hope it'll take less than six years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Basically, basically, your book that you're going to make is for, kid, is for kids, ten, like, ten, eight yeah. ten? Yeah, I know. When I started, so the Girl Scout troop I was telling you about, I'm sure they've all graduated high school by now. Right. I'm sure they've all finished. Yeah. They would not. Yeah. They're too old. But <laughs> the book you're going to be making is just going to be the age of 10 or older because yeah. it, but five, in five years when you finish it. Yes, sure. exactly. Sure. <laughs> you're about 10 15. Yeah. So the other thing I wanted to ask you about is um, uh, your teacher. Are you, mm -hmm. what do you, what do you teach? What are you teaching art? Yeah, I'm an art teacher. I teach, I also do, um, so I do, I teach high school, 
Okay. But I also teach pre-K to eighth grade, okay. sort of after school and in the summers. And so I teach everyone, basically, mm -hmm, which is mm -hmm. so much fun because I feel like every everyone of any age is like awesome and they're all and i teach i do a lot of comics because like anyone of any age can read a comic and really love it yeah. and so like we draw comics and we write our own stories yeah and it's like the best it's so much fun um and then and it's also really helpful for for in like an art classroom to be talking about literacy mm -hmm. and like spelling and then writing stories and there's so many benefits to it mm -hmm. um at any age yeah, yeah. for sure I have a question also. Uh, okay. what you should do maybe for one of your comic things is like give them an idea like mm -hmm. like here read this comic book then then like have walk up as a vampire slave and <laughs> I've had someone, I've had the, I've had a fan comic for this. This book has come out, been out for about a month now. And I did have a student draw me a fan comic and it was Warthog and Bulldog. So I think, oh, very good. I think they are a fan favorite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could, I could definitely see that being the shipper. Yeah. Just tell them to read one of your books and then say like, now think of this character as this job. That's a great idea. Sure. I love that. Sure. That makes sense. Soccer stall in five years and come up with this. Sure, no, those are those are good ideas. Those are good ideas. Do you have a question? Yeah. What's the title of your next book? Secret. So this one, this one actually had three different titles while I was working on it. So whatever the title is, I it's like temporary. It's not a real mm. title. Very good. Because publishers like to change titles because usually the ones that I come up with aren't snappy enough. <laughs> Can I show that? Yeah. All right. So the first title was Every Dog for Herself, uh, which was a pun on like yeah. every man for himself. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I get it, yeah. but it, it's not. That's not but a commercial But I feel title. like, yeah. honestly, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like, to, I like make up the title. And I'm like, it's like, it's funny how the title is like, the title and the cover are the parts that you guys see all the time. And that's right. what marketing sees all the sure. time. But when you're working on a comic, it's just like the last thing yeah, yeah. I'm thinking yeah, yeah. about. It's yeah, yeah. like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, and then for a long time, it was No Dogs Allowed, which was the title. Um, but they didn't like that it had the word no in it. Right, sure. Because uh, you want it to be positive. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then my, uh, my uh, agent came up with the breakaways, mm -hmm. which I... Love, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, and then what, yeah. What is the basis for that name? Like, why, why did they choose so breakaways? Breakaway is like a thing that you can do in sports. You can break away from a thing. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know a lot about sports. I still don't quite know the rules to soccer. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> tells you about what yeah. this book is like. Um, uh, so it's like a it's like a sports term, but also when you're reading the story, there are all these kids who are have differences, who are still figuring things out, who are trying to make different decisions. So breaking away is like something that I felt like was like a great sort of sure. summary of what the book is sure. about. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Now what's your title ideas for your next book? I can't tell you, I'm sorry. Yeah, she doesn't this want to give gonna, anything this away. This is being filmed and going to be on the internet. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So um, speaking of that, since we're on the film on, and the internet, I wanted to ask you uh, the, your name. You go by Kathy G. Johnson. Is I this, go by Kathy G. Is, Johnson. Is this because of Kathy Johnson who does For Better or For Worse? That's Lynn Johnson. Oh, it's Lynn Johnson. Yeah. There's not another Kathy There's Johnson. a Kathy, Kathy something who well, does Kathy. Here. With the C. Oh, maybe that's what. That's, but her that's last Geis, name is something Geis different. White. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, it's because Kathy Johnson. There's, a, I don't know, three million of us, three okay. billion of us, or so. Okay. okay. Um, and so, so okay. throw in the G, and to, then to, I'm Googleable. There you go. That's that was. <laughs> that's basically uh, what that it was is. That was kind of the question, the Googleable yeah. question. Yeah. It's just Googleable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Because Kathy Johnson, there's like a lot of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, and then the last thing, I guess, because I, I was trying to get to it before, that there's a little URL there with the yeah. comic art edition. Did you want to plug? You're, because, you know, this is going to live forever, you yeah. know. So, um, comicarted.com mm -hmm. 
is my teaching educational website. So it's for kids, and but it's also for librarians and adults and teachers and whoever wants to do drawing and dr making comic books with kids. Mm -hmm. So it's comicarted.com, and I share lesson plans. I have like other books that you can check out and read. Um, I have some bonus stuff for this book on there. Oh, nice. um, I also have my podcast, which is more geared towards adults. Mm -hmm. um, it's about scholarship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You could listen to it. It's not inappropriate. It's just it's about academia. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's not interesting. Mm -hmm. um, um, so that's like sort of where I share my comic educational work um, because I believe that comics are wonderful and I think they could be more integrated in schools and I think everyone would benefit from that. Yeah, yeah, yeah very much so. I agree. I agree. Um, I want to thank you for coming out and talking yeah. to us. Um, I want to thank you for the book. I loved this book. I thought this book was so sweet. When I, when, you know, we get, we get uh, advanced copies of stuff, and, and sometimes I have to choose what, what book we're picking for the kids' club. And I just saw this immediately, and I was like, oh, this is perfect. It's, Thank you. It's a, it's a beautiful piece of cartooning. It's, it, it, you know, it, it feels real. These characters are vivid. I loved it. You guys loved it, right? You guys loved it? Yeah. Right? You guys <laughs> loved it? <laughs> Thank right, you. That was close. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on that. Um, I want to recommend to anybody who's watching at home, if you have not yet gone out and gotten a copy of The Breakaways, this is a book that you should go and get and, uh, and to support. Uh, it's a fantastic book. A um, little bit of club business. Our next uh, uh, meeting, which is the May meeting, um, is for a book called Pilu of the Woods by N Mai K. Nguyen. Um, and she is such a good cartoonist. You guys are going to love this book. I am told that, and this is kind of cool, that we're going to get bookmarks that have a seed inside of them so that you'll be able to cool. plant the bookmark in the ground and grow a plant. Cool. That seems really cool to me somehow. <laughs> um, so uh, so Pilu of the Woods, we don't have it today, so I can't give it to you today. But that event is going to be on May 19th um, at our usual 10 a.m. here. Um, and I know the book after that too, but I'm not going to tell you because I don't want to get ahead of it. But you're going to love the next couple of books that are coming up. S okay. Such good comics. That I love. Great. I love comics. Oh, <laughs> comics. Um, I want to thank everybody for watching. I want to thank everybody for coming out. I want to thank you for coming out, especially. We couldn't have done this. I want to thank one more time the Beat, uh, www.comicsbeat.com, for sponsoring these shows and helping the broadcast happen. Uh, thank you, everybody, and we will talk to you next month. Thank you.